Hi everyone, this is Stephanie at Hightower Stitching with today's video. Gone off on another little track. As I was growing up, and even now as an adult, I found things that I liked to do, and I would find that sometimes I was knitting, sometimes I'd crochet, sometimes I quilted, and just went on and on, and sometimes I'd embroider. And I wanted to share with you today um, one nice little stitchery um, pattern that you can use embroidery thread and do on gingham. And right here I've got a nice collection of gingham fabrics. And you're going to find a color of your embroidery that you like that goes with this. And the pattern that I have was for an apron. But once you figure out the pattern, you could put it on anything. A, a little girl's dress any kind of decorating that you'd like to do, and it's handwork. I'll move this out of the way and let you see. Here's the bottom of the apron. This is about three inches up, and this is the pattern I wanted to show you. And then even with the apron, when you got to the top, because it would be wide material, I'll put the uh, numbers in the description, you'd take and go over and fold under and then do the same thing right in there about four times across or however many times that you needed. So that said, here is my basic paper pattern. And it's got four parts. The first part is just making uh, lines that run from the top to the bottom and then you can start and you run up and you run down, but they've got to be in a certain place, and I'll show you that in just a minute. Once you get those lines in, then you're going to come back, and you're going to go in the next row that you missed, and go, but this time you're going to go horizontally, and go all the way across, and then come back, and then go all the way across. And then, the next part, part C, the third part, is that you start with your embroidery thread, and you take and you go over and you catch the edge of this box, the edge of this one, the edge of this one, the edge of this one. I think I usually start right here, though, because when I end up right there, I can go right straight down to the next one. But you're not going to go down in through the material. You're going to go under that little peg you made, under that one, under that one, under that one, and then go down to the next one. And pretty soon you'll have all these diamond patterns on on your uh, pattern. And then finally, the last thing is that in each one of those diamonds, you're going to come back and you're going to make a star. You're going to do your row across, one up and down. Let's see, you're going to do uh, up and down, you're going to do across. And whichever way you do it, always repeat it. And I always had it where my line going up and down was the last thing that I did. And then I jumped down to the next diamond and I would start doing those. And, and I did the side first to side and then side to side. And then I did the connect a point across the middle and connect the point from the bottom to the top. And that did go through. And pretty soon you would be back to that pretty pattern that I was showing you. See if you can see it on here again now. And you'd have all of this. And you could use a hoop if you wanted to when you first started. It, um, and then after a while, you get good enough at it that you can just do running stitches and up and down stitches. And you don't need that, uh, the hoop. Here's another one that I had started. And this one is using embroidery thread. And it... I used three strands. That seemed to make a very nice um, pattern on there. So that would be the ones that come in the packs that you do. But you know, now, this is the other ones that I've found, and I've showed you this before if you've watched, where you can buy on a, on a, well, I guess on this little round thing here. Anyway, but these, I don't separate. I just use those as um, the, they come off of the spool. And the thing about it was I could match. I, I could didn't matter whether I used, I could use these two both 
on the same thing because they do look alike. This looks like three strands when you get it. But there are some beautiful colors, but then there are beautiful colors of embroidery thread too that you can buy. And now what I wanted to do was show you one where I did it by the steps because you need to put them, if you'll notice, the, the star is always going to go in the white box in between. And I think I've already confused myself. I'm not going to put the star, oh, this is funny. I'm not going to put the star in the diamond. I'm going to put it in the white box. I stand corrected. Okay. Here's the first one that we were talking about. Now, I have already, this was going to be an apron, so I had already gone ahead and pulled up the hem and then the top part. And if you'll look, I'm going to start in the dark pink row, but I'm going to do the lighter pink, not the dark. I'm going to go, and I'm just going to start up and down and up and down and up and down and up and down. And you can turn around, and then if you have enough thread, you can come back, skip that white line in between, and then go to the next one. And you do that all the way. And you can, I used to do them in sections, because then you can always come back and put the next row on there and do it. So in this case, I did have to go pretty far because I wanted to show you all of the parts that I did. All right, when I get to B, now this one I changed colors, and I hope you can see those, because the first one rows going down I did in purple, so they'd show up. Well then, I went ahead and I used my spool embroidery thread, and this time I was looking at the white row going down, the column, and then I was putting it in the pink, light pink this time again, but now I was going across, up and down the same way. And then you'd end up with this pattern. All right. And then C was the diamond where I sort of messed up. But here's where your diamond is. And I, this is where I said that I started over here on the side. And I went under that peg, under that peg, under that peg. Got up to this peg and I went straight down. And came up at the next place right underneath it. And I went around and I caught each one of the pegs. Went down. Came back up at the next one. And there again, you can go all the way down. Then start, come back on. It's easier. And I was right-handed. And then go up and catch that all the way across. And now, if you've been watching the whole thing. Because people do make mistakes. And I, at least I caught my mistake. This is so funny. Okay, this is part D, my smiley face. All right, there's my needle and thread. And a nice sharp needle with a larger eye so that you can get the embroidery is neat. So now you're going to start up here at the top. And if you look, you can probably see that my last peg or last stitch I make goes up and down. So, go in and go from point to point, point to point, and then do the side to the side. Well, that would be the last one. Do the first one would be the side to side, and then from top to bottom, and that would give you that one. Then you go down to the next white, white box, and now I think I finally got it. You're going to go from corner to corner, then the other corner to the other corner, stitch across the middle, to the other side and then do the one that goes from the top to the bottom so that finally you get that all filled up and you can see where I had uh, you can keep going with one part and come back and work on one part where you're not bored and that makes it a lot of fun and this one was a decoration used on an apron and this is using gingham and embroidery thread and um, it's nice to carry with you. It's one of those take along or sit and watch TV things that you can do. This is Stephanie at High Tower Stitching. I hope you enjoyed this little trip back into my history and that you have a great day. Um, if you enjoyed this, please um, hit subscribe and like.
And remember, subscribing doesn't cost you anything. Any comments or any piece from your history, be sure to share that in the comments. Thank you.